I shared a meme on my Facebook page, How to Build a Tent, Friday, that said, America, be the America Hong Kong thinks you are. That is such a great meme. It like just hits on the nail that we have fallen so far from our identity that the rest of the world still believes we are, that still has hope that we are. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Welcome to How to Build a Tent, the podcast on how to make you successful. My name is Matt Williams. Thank you for listening to the show, for sharing the show, for following my social media sites, for liking my memes that I think are way funnier than they probably are. And also for liking all the things that I'm sharing on my social media sites, I like to share things on my site that are pictures of success and why it is important for us as Christians to be successful. It's not for material possessions. It's not for us to have large houses and really nice cars, but it's because we have more access to do things. We are more of an authority on different areas that we are successful in when we are successful than if we weren't, because no one wants to listen to people that are not successful. If you want to reach out to me, feel free to. You can email me, Matt, at howtobuildatent.com. You can find me on the social media sites, How to Build a Tent, or click the links below. I try to make it as easy as possible. We are also part of the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network, the great Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. If you have not already subscribed, what's wrong with you people? You need to get over there and subscribe because you get an HTBT mug when you put an HTBT in the memo field. You get a pint glass if you hurry because those are going really quickly. And you get tons of great content, but most of all, you're supporting us and you're keeping us around. Just think about how cold and dark and wet your life was. You were walking in the rain, in the dark, without all of the shows on the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. And in order to keep you from going back to that place... You need to subscribe to Fight, Laugh, Feast. Go over to fightlaughfeast.com, put an HGBT in the memo field. Did I overdo that a bit? Was that too hard of a sell? You know, as a salesperson, you got to know when to push it and when to step back. And I might have went overboard for a little bit. All right, today I have two shout outs that I want to give. I am calling, giving shout outs to people that listen to the show that are fellow tent builders, people that are making a difference. If you are doing something, I'd love to hear about it, how I can help you. One of the ways I can help you is give you free advertising. That's what I do on this show. I'm going to try to do at least one a day, but today we got two because it's really important. Hey, it's Monday. Let's start off strong. The first one, and this is really easy, guys. This takes seriously so little of your time. I just want you to do two Facebook likes. Can you just go to Facebook on your phone when you're not driving? Because I know a lot of you listen to this on the way to your jobs. When you're at a stoplight, go over to Babies Are Murdered Here. That's Marcus Pittman and John Speed. They have a Babies Are Murdered Here 2 coming out, and they have a goal of getting to 10,000 likes. And right now, as I say this, they have 9,424. So could you guys just take a few seconds and just go like that Babies Are Murdered Here page? The second one is a great friend of mine, a really good friend of mine from, uh, from, well, when was that? Back in the Calvary Chapel days, yes. I got saved at a Calvary Chapel and spent my early Christian life at Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa. Got to know Chuck Smith and uh, got to be discipled by him. That was a really awesome experience. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. There's my favorite saying again from those of you who have listened from the beginning. That's neither here nor there. Amy Fan West for Congress, California 47. She is a Christian sister running for Congress in the deep blue seas of California. And she is running in District 47. I believe that's what the 47 means. But if you could just go like her page as well. I'm not asking you to donate. I'm not asking you to do anything else. But just like her page and help her get those page likes up. It is so important in social media to get the page likes. For those of you who are social media managers, you know what I'm talking about. And the faster you can grow that and the more numbers you can get when you have fewer numbers, the more momentum you get and the faster you can build the so the higher numbers you get. So if you could do me a favor, it'll take like literally a minute. You just type in that Facebook search bar, babies are murdered here, like that page for Marcus and John, and then like for my friend Amy, Amy Fan West, 
A M Y Fan P H A N. She came over from Vietnam as a child and she's just living the American dream and I'm so proud of her. She's actually going to be on the Cross Politics show. Uh, or she is on the Cross Politics show. I'm recording this before she was on the interview, but it should be out by the time this show's out. So you can check her out. Give her a like. Please support her. All right. I want to talk about a meeting that Donald Trump had with the big banks, JP Morgan, Bank of America, Citigroup. He called them up and they had a conference call, which, man, I would have loved to be on that call. And he basically asked them to give him an overview of the economy and the health of the consumer. And I do, first of all, I just love this. I love that he is reaching out to people that are actually in the private sector to get their advice. And I'm thankful that these CEOs aren't crazy leftists that won't meet with the president because you can easily see them doing that. And what they said was that the consumer is doing really well. And the consumer is important because our economy is based on consumption and buying things. So it's important to know what the consumer is thinking, how they're doing, especially in light of last week that the optimism was down from what was expected. And they said, but they could be doing better if the US-China trade war was resolved. And I bring that up and I want to talk about this for a second because I don't think Trump thinks that the China-US trade war is a near-term near win for the United States. I don't think he thinks that this is making us more successful. But just like in any war, cyber war, trade war, real war, you are sacrificing in the near term for the belief that something positive is going to come in the future from addressing a wrong, from con confronting something that is evil and unjust. And what the Chinese have been doing to us has been declaring war on us for a very long time, and we just never stood up to them until Donald Trump. And I don't think he thinks that this is good for the consumer near term, but the fruit of it and what's going to come from China being put in their place is going to be incredibly beneficial to us. And it says on the article that I was reading about that Trump was actually really uh, receptive to it, which is a really good thing. But I think we need to remember this. And it's the same principle that's in investing, really. You're investing in a cause. You're investing in a strategy. And what Trump is betting on is that if we get a trade deal or if we don't get a trade deal and all of the factories and all of the businesses move out of China, either way, in the long term, the United States is going to be well off. And I totally agree with him on that perspective. No matter what happens here, I believe it is a win-win for us if we can pull it off. If we back down, if the media, if the Democrats, if the liberals win and do what they did to us in the Vietnam War, which is politically ambush us and turn the sentiment of the people of the United States against us, and we back out, that's how we lose. But if we continue to hold on, which I think Trump will, I think he has a really good chance of being reelected just statistically and seeing the opponents. But if he continues to hold China's feet to the fire and forces their hand one way or another, either they're going to agree to an agreement that is going to make us more competitive and more successful, and they're gonna stop stealing all of our trade secrets which they've been doing for a long time, all of our company secrets and going and copying it themselves. Or they're going to continue to drag their feet. They're going to continue to fight against us. And what's happening now is going to continue to happen. All these companies are going to be pulling out of China and going to other places, Vietnam, Mexico, and all these other places, which is another reason the Canadian, Mexican, and United States trade agreement is important to pass too, which it probably won't. It probably won't pass the Senate. Um, the House of Representatives probably won't approve it. So we need to win back both houses in the Senate, which is another important thing to be successful. But the thing about this is, is we're taking a temporary hit now. Our cons consumers aren't spending as much. The company, the, the bankers, the CEOs of the bank said that investment is down because we're waiting to see what happens with the trade war. But the thing is, is once this is resolved one way or the other, that we don't need China anymore or we made a deal with China, Companies are going to start investing again. Consumers are going to have a more positive outlook. But if China doesn't do anything and doesn't agree to what we are demanding of them to do, 
they're going to lose all those companies and those companies are not coming back. They're not going to come back to China, especially with the totalitarian uh, flow that they're going to. They're going towards being more totalitarianistic instead of being free traders. And companies are scared of that. Capital is scared of that. And the last thing I wanted to point out about this meeting is they also talked about the Federal Reserve and that they said that a 25 basis point or a quarter percent cut by the Fed won't likely change capital flows in the market which could be interesting in a few ways. One, I think this kind of guarantees that the Fed is going to cut another 25 basis points or a quarter percent, but it might also mean that they're going to cut 50 basis points or more, which would be really good for our portfolios. Our portfolios will go up from that. I don't know if it's good overall in our economy because I just don't like the idea of people setting prices and all the interest rate is is a price on money. And, but I do know that whenever the feds cut rates, the market goes up, which might be a good time to start um, buying some value opportunities from the big downswing we just had. Who knows? We will see. Let me know what your thoughts are about the market or any of these other things, the economy. Let's continue to be as successful. Please go and uh, like those two pages, Babies Are Murdered Here and Amy Pham for Congress. I'll put the links in the show notes. Just takes a minute and it's going to be so helpful for them if we could rally behind them. I'd really appreciate it. Let's go out and be successful. God bless. God bless.